Today, I'm gonna to show you guys how to put custom settings, AKA recipes, inside of the Fujifilm X106. The goal of this video is to become a master of the Fujifilm custom settings, AKA the recipes. In order to do that, we're first gonna be going through custom buttons, the quick menu, and the my menu to make sure that it's as easy as possible to add new recipes, delete recipes, edit recipes, and even cycle through the recipes for quick shoot-in. If you've already watched my other video on how to set up your Fujifilm X106, then you can skip to part two, but if you're completely new here, then I'm gonna do a quick recap of that video on the most important things you need to know for this video. The first thing that we're gonna set up is the custom My Menu on your Fuji, which can be found in the bottom left corner of your settings page. In order to get this page properly set up, we're gonna go into the setup page, we're gonna go into user settings, and then we're gonna go into the photo my menu settings. In this page, you're gonna add items and then select all the settings. I'm gonna go into my rank items to show you how I have it set up. Number one is image quality. Number two is film simulation. Number three is grain effect. Number four is color chrome effect. Number five is color chrome effect blue. Number six is white balance. Number seven is dynamic range. Number eight is tone curve. Number nine is color. Number 10 is sharpness. Number 11 is clarity. Number 12 is high ISO noise reduction. Number 13 is select custom setting. And number 14 is edit and save custom setting. If you accidentally add something that you shouldn't, you can remove these items. And if you didn't add them in the same way that I did, you can rank these items appropriately. Setting up the My Menu page in this way allows you to easily see all of the Fujifilm custom settings and then select and edit these settings at your ease. The next menu that we're going to set up is the Quick Menu. The Quick Menu is accessed by pressing the Q button on the right side of the Fujifilm camera. And as you can see, My Menu is already set up. We can head into the Menu System and then go to the Setup page, the Button and Dial Settings page, and then the Edit Save Quick Menu for the Photo Settings. And here we're going to select 16 slots. The first slot is automatically set to the mode of the camera, and then all of the other 15 slots we can custom set. You can now copy these 15 custom settings that I've set up. Number two is image quality. Number three is white balance. Number four is flash function setting. Number five is film simulation. Number six is grain effect. Number seven is color chrome effect. Number eight is color chrome effect blue. Number nine is highlight tone. Number 10 is shadow tone. Number 11 is sharpness. Number 12 is clarity. Number 13 is color. Number 14 is high ISO noise reduction. Number 15 is dynamic range, and number 16 is ND filter. Once you set up the quick menu, it should look like this, and then you have access to a ton of your settings that you can edit on the fly. So now we wanna set two more custom settings inside of this camera before we start putting in our recipes. We're gonna go into the setup page again, we're gonna go into the button and dial setting page again, and then we're gonna go into the function FN settings. For FN1, which is the custom button to the right of the shutter, we're gonna go into this and select select custom setting. For FN2, which is the button on the front of the camera right next to the selector, we're gonna go in and change this to film simulation. Once we've set these two function buttons, we've completely set up our custom camera, and then we can back out and we'll see if we press FN1, we can choose between our custom settings by using the joystick on the back of the camera. And if we press the FN2, which is right next to the selector, we can go through and change the film simulations on the fly. Now that we've set up the Fujifilm X106 to our Lycan, I'm gonna tell you the exact workflow of how this custom settings is going to work on the Fujifilm X106. The first thing that you're gonna do is find a custom setting recipe that you like online. From there, you're gonna find the settings, you're gonna go into your menu page, and then you're gonna input all of these settings on this page. You're then going to save the custom setting. You then can select the custom setting by pressing the function one button that you selected, and then eventually select in your custom setting. You can go into the quick menu and you can make quick changes. Let's say you don't like the blue saturation and you want it to be a little more punchy. You can go into the color chrome effect blue and change that to strong so your blues will be more saturated. You can then back out of this page, shoot with it. You can go back into the menu and you can save this custom setting again and make sure that it is set to your liking. If you don't like this custom setting, you can also delete it here. If you find that your film recipe is really close but it's just not quite there yet, you can go and press the FN2 to get to the film simulations and you could live circulate through your film simulations to see if any of these make a better recipe. 
Once again, if you selected a different film simulation, you can then go into the menu and save that custom set in. Now let's go into the My menu and let's create our first custom set in. The first thing that I like to do when I'm setting up my custom set ins page is to make sure I have a base custom set in. This base custom set in is going to have nothing set for it. It is going to have all of these set to the default, which means if I'm really messing with a custom set in and trying to create a new one and it looks pretty bad, I can always reset my camera to this custom set in to make sure there's nothing set. So for me, that is image quality raw, film simulation standard or Provia, grain effect off, color chrome effect off, color chrome effect blue off, white balance auto, dynamic range auto, tone curve zero on highlights and shadows, color zero, sharpness zero, clarity zero, high ISO noise reduction zero. I'm then gonna go into my custom settings page and then I'm going to save number seven as this base. I'm gonna go in and then I'm going to edit this custom name and I'm gonna set this to base or none or default. It's really whatever lets you remember that none of the settings are set here. So now we have one setting that has nothing and then we have six settings to play around with. I'm getting my custom setting recipes from Fuji X Weekly. This is a great community of people that are creating new Fujifilm recipes every single day and they're posting them online for free and allowing people to put these recipes into their camera if it matches the exact same sensor. So I went ahead and the way that I like to find them is to look up a film stock that I like to use. So for example, when I shoot 35 millimeter film, I love to use Kodak Gold 200. So I went ahead and found a Kodak Gold 200 recipe and these are all the custom settings. Now we're gonna go ahead and put this into our camera. For film simulation, we are going to select classic chrome. For dynamic range, we are going to select DR400. For grain effect, we are going to select strong and small. For color chrome effect, we are going to select weak. For color chrome effect blue, we are going to leave that off. For white balance, we are going to go plus four to the reds and minus five to the blues. For highlights, we are going to do minus 1.5. And for shadows, we're going to do plus 0.5. For color, we're going to do plus three. For sharpness, we're going to do minus two. For high ISO noise reduction, we are going to be doing minus four. And for clarity, we're gonna be doing minus two. I'm then gonna go ahead here and save this custom recipe because that is all the settings that we can set. So once I'm in here, I'm going to edit this name and I am going to set this to gold 200. You can see that we can't put the exposure compensation into this recipe but they do recommend shooting it at plus two thirds to plus one stop. So for me, I'm just gonna do a plus for every one third stop that I want to shoot this overexposed. And I'm probably gonna do plus two thirds overexposed. So I'm just gonna do plus plus to remind myself that this is gold 200 and then push it two thirds of a stop. Once we do that, we can now select our first custom setting with the FN button and we have gold 200 plus plus. And then we could go ahead here and do two stops to the dynamic range. And now we have that set up perfectly. However, I wanna keep adding more recipes. So I'm gonna go ahead here, going to turn this recipe off, going to turn that exposure compensation down to zero again. And then we're gonna go back into the menu system. So you can see now, once we turn that gold 200 preset off, we still have all of these settings set up, which can be a little confusing when we're going to create a new setting. So the way to combat this is we're going to exit this and then we are going to actually select our none custom set in when we're creating our new custom set in. Once we go back into the menu, we can see that everything that we have set is set back to off or zero. And now we can create our second recipe. So for the second recipe, I found Portra 400, which is another film stock that I love to shoot. I found this on Fuji X Weekly and I have all of the settings here once again, and we're gonna go put these in. Film simulation, I'm gonna select classic chrome. For dynamic range, I'm gonna set this to DR400. Grain effect, we're gonna select strong and small. Color chrome effect, we're gonna leave on strong. Color chrome effect blue off. For white balance, we are going to go into Kelvin, and then we are gonna set this to 5200. And then we're gonna do plus one to the red and minus six to the blue. 
For tone curve, we're gonna go zero to the highlights and then minus two for the shadows. For color, we're gonna do plus two. For sharpness, we're gonna do minus two. For high ISO noise reduction, we're gonna do minus four. And then for clarity, we're going to do minus two. We're now going to edit and save this custom set in and we're gonna save this in C2. We're gonna say okay. So we are going to name this Portra 400 and then it is recommended to shoot this at one third of a stop over to one stop over. I'm probably only gonna do the minimum, which is just one third. So we'll just give it one plus. So now that we're done setting up those two custom presets in the Fujifilm X106, we can see how we're gonna use this in the field. We're just gonna go ahead and hit the FN button one here, and this is gonna reveal all of the presets. And here you can see we have gold 200 plus plus and the Kodak Portra 400 plus. When you're in the field, you can cycle between these and see how they affect your image and then you could choose which one you want to shoot with. Once you select that, you can remember to change your exposure compensation because of the plus, and then you could go about shooting. If you want to change it again, you're just going to hit that FN1, go back to gold 200 plus, and then go back into the two thirds exposure compensation. Once you shoot around with this a little more, you might find out that the simulation is a little too strong. So you're going to go in and then you're going to select custom set in seven, which is going to reset your camera. You're gonna reset this to exposure compensation zero. So you work through this workflow a lot and now you decide that you wanna create your own Fujifilm custom set in recipe. So let's go through that now. We're gonna jump back into the menu and then we are going to go into the My Menu tab. We're gonna make sure that we are selected on custom set in seven, which is none. So we have a fresh base to start with. Once we have that, we're gonna to go to the top and start creating our new recipe. We're then gonna to go to edit and save custom set in, and we're gonna go and name this test. So we name this preset test, we back out, we go back to our C7, we're gonna reset these changes so it's ready for the next simulation that we're gonna create. And now we're gonna go back to shoot in. We're gonna go into the FN1, we're gonna go into our custom setting and select our test, and we're gonna shoot around with this new simulation. Once we see how we like it, we can then go and make changes in the quick menu. We're gonna hit Q, and let's say we want more contrast, so we're gonna bring up these highlights and shadows. We want less sharpness, we want less dreamy light clarity. We want less color. And let's say we want a little more grain. So now we're gonna go out and we are going to shoot with this recipe again. We're gonna see what's wrong with it. And we decide that we think the thing that's wrong is the film simulation. So the good thing about changing the film simulation is if we press the FN2 on the front of the camera, we can go ahead and change this film simulation with a live view so we can see how these film simulations are affecting the image. We then decide that Eterna Cinema is the best film simulation for these custom settings that we've set up, and now we think we've locked in a perfect recipe. We're gonna hop back into the menu here. We're gonna go to Edit and Save Custom Settings. We're gonna go into our test setting, and we are going to save these changes. Once we've done that, we can go back into our Q menu and we'll see that all of those changes that we made, the turn of cinema, the highlight tones, the shadow tones, the noise reduction, everything is now changed and this recipe is good to go. We can also think that maybe we can improve this recipe even though it's pretty good and we're really gonna mess with those tones again. Now we're gonna back out and we're gonna shoot with this camera and we realize that we have ruined this recipe. It looks terrible. No worries, we're gonna go back into the menu we're gonna edit and save custom set in. We're gonna go into the test and we're gonna reset those changes. This will not reset it to zero. This is just gonna reset it to that last state. So if we go back into the quick menu, we'll see that those highlight and shadow tones are the same again. Finally, the last thing is there's not enough room here to put so many film simulations. So eventually you're gonna to have to delete some. So we're gonna go into the edit custom settings and we realize that our test preset is actually no good compared to the ones that we found online. So we're gonna go into the C3 test, we're gonna go and we're going to erase this set in. Once we're there, we're gonna open up that slot again, which is gonna allow us to create new film presets. So that is an overview on how to set the My Menu for Film Simulations, the Quick Menu for Film Simulations, your two FN custom buttons for film simulations, how to add 
edit, delete, and cycle through film simulations. Create your own presets, test them. If you guys learned anything, please share this video with someone, leave a comment, and subscribe. There's going to be a ton more Fujifilm content coming to this channel. But for now, that is all. I'll catch you guys in the next one.